What is the art of repetition? And what does this have to do with not copying yourself? The activities in the video are ideally suited to middle school and high school art students and teachers making their own artworks or young artists. Several years ago, I visited Museo Picasso in Barcelona to study one of the most famous experimental series of paintings of Picasso's career, his 1957 Las Meninas series, which he gifted to the Museo Picasso in Barcelona in 1968. Picasso's series of paintings is the artist's response to Diego Velázquez's famous Las Meninas painting, painted in 1656, of the ladies-in-waiting of the five-year-old Infanta Margaret Teresa, the daughter of Spain's King Philip IV. In the painting, the five-year-old princess is surrounded by her entourage. Just behind them, in the left of the picture, Velázquez portrays himself working at a large canvas. As I said, I went to the Museo Picasso to study Picasso's Las Meninas series of paintings because it is a remarkable lesson of art making that contains three valuable secrets on how to become an experimental artist. Because Picasso is such an excellent role model for experimentation, I recently took some of my 10 and 12 year old students to see another Picasso exhibition, this one in Warsaw. We studied Picasso's lithographs of faces where he was experimenting with drawing and painting stylistic variations of the same face. When my students were able to see the series of variations he made displayed side by side, they grasped Picasso's experimental approach and were inspired to make their own fusion artworks, combining what they saw in Picasso's faces with ideas from their own imagination. What did these young students understand about Picasso's way of experimenting? What are the three secrets that we discussed and that they recognized in his work? The first is to understand that for Picasso, the act of painting or drawing was experimentation. Let's think about this. He is saying that he painted to discover what it might be possible to paint. He didn't paint to simply copy what was already in his head. He painted with an open mind, with curiosity, to find out what would emerge on the paper or the canvas intuitively in real time. So the first secret is, do not premeditate. Just start drawing or painting and trust your intuition. The second secret is the art of repetition by working in a series. A series is where you repeat a theme or motif or a simple idea and allow the images to evolve. This approach can take the pressure off trying to make each painting perfect and can enable you to be more playful. And this also allows you to discover new possibilities as you watch what happens each time you draw or paint your subject. So the second secret is to work in series. Repeat your theme or subject many times. And the third secret is learning how to avoid copying yourself when you repeat your theme or motif. Now Picasso's trick when he was making his Las Meninas series was every time he completed a painting, he would turn it to face the wall. By doing this, he couldn't see it when he started the next painting. In this way, he purposely put out of his mind what he'd painted just the day before or the hour before he wanted to start each canvas fresh. Secret one, work with an open mind and trust your intuition. Secret two, work in series, repeating your subject or theme many times. Secret three, try to forget what you've just done before starting a new drawing or painting. Now with Las Meninas, 
Picasso took four and a half months to complete his series of 58 oil paintings. Most of us don't have this time. So how can we use his technique in our own classrooms or studios? In my own studio practice, I've been making large ink and acrylic paintings of trees and birds, and I recently decided to try something new and see what happens if I brought the scale right down from 100 centimeters tall to about 20 centimeters tall. So in the space of about 80 minutes, I painted one picture after another without any planning to discover what emerged. I made 15 pictures in that time. I kept 12 and discarded three disasters. After completing each one, I put it aside, out of view, and immediately started the next. You can see the variety that starts emerging. Some elements were a carryover from my larger paintings, but there were many new discoveries that I am sure will find their way into the next series of large paintings I make. The trick is to trust that something will happen so long as you are making marks on paper. Do not overthink things. Just start on the paper and then let your intuition take over. As Picasso said, what is most important is what you learn about how your creative thoughts move from one impulse to another. Feeling this happen can give you confidence to create more. Try this activity. You will need a small art pad and your favorite painting or drawing materials. Choose a simple motif or theme or subject that you are already familiar with. Maybe a face or something from nature like a tree or an animal you have drawn before or even an abstract grid. If you are stuck for a starting motif, try my face game or my Jasper Johns game to give you ideas for a motif or subject. When you're ready, make sure you have enough time. If you're making A5 sized or 6 by 8 inch drawings or paintings, try to set aside 90 minutes. This will allow you to create up to 15 drawings or painting sketches. Work quite quickly and don't worry too much if the first few are a bit chaotic or confused. Be patient and playful and you will soon find your rhythm. Also, don't try too much detail. Keep things simple and even a little bit unfinished. As soon as you have completed one sketch, put it behind you or out of sight on the floor and immediately start the next one. I like to line mine up on the floor in the same order that I created them. Then at the end of my session, I number each one. If this is the first time you have tried this technique, be patient with your efforts. Reflect on the moments when things seem to flow for you and try it again sometime soon.